Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, was going to do some editing tonight, but then I ran across something that has has absolutely terrified me. Not terrified me. Pissed me off beyond. But I don't have words. Um, links in the blow bar. Um, there is a company called Library Systems and Services, which is now. The, according to the New York Times, the fifth largest library system in the country. Apparently, there are many jurisdictions that when they get into trouble, um, they are privatizing their library to cut costs. And Santa Clarita, um, which is not under, is not having trouble, at least not to that degree, um, is now private, passing off to LSSI. Um, and I'd like to note a few things. The county is maintaining control over the stacks and the content of the stacks. How they make money is charging for some services, shooing out union employees, um, whittling down, you know, how many jobs are, you know, require Masters of Library Science and how much, you know, which are outsourced, um, essentially by dumbing down the library. and essentially by squeezing it. And I'm having horrible flashbacks to, not in the literal sense, but horrible memories of the early years of Larry Small's tenure as the secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, and the first businessman rather than academic to be appointed as a secretary, and what he did, and what Gary Beer, who was the head of Smithsonian Business Ventures, which is the part of the Smithsonian that is supposed to make money for the rest of the organization, and how the Lockheed Mark, or sorry, the Samuel Pierpoint Langley IMAX Theater in the Air and Space Museum is now the Lockheed Martin um, IMAX Theater. How the Flight Line Cafe is now a McDonald's. Um, how all of the food is now run by Marriott. Um, that is McDonald's. Um, although I think McDonald's owns that Marriott, um, sorry, Marriott owns that McDonald's. I'm not sure. Uh, it's been years since I worked there. Um, how the Einstein Planetarium, the, the, I know Fuji um, bought part, or at least their name into there. How the American Museum of History, the National Museum of American History, is now the National Museum of American History Bering Center, as in Charles Bering, who donated money, as in the new Udvarhazy Center, well not new, it was new in 2002, I think, um, being built in 2000-2001, um, as in how they did a deal basically to outsource their entire website and catalog to museumcompany.com and lost $30 million on the deal. If I recall correctly, I have no facts in front of me and I'm trying to remember what happened years ago. Um, and remember, of course, you know, if you just Google Larry Small and irresponsibility or scandal, uh, you will learn all sorts of things about what Larry Small did. Gary Beer, basically his whole thing was he used to be the head of propaganda films, Robert Redford's old out. And what he did was gut it and turn it into a high-speed advertising shooting. I mean, all they did was shoot ads. I mean, I don't even know if they're still in exist anymore, but what he did is he gutted it, sold off the assets in the film catalog, and turned it into an advertising production company. Um, in short, he was the perfect kind of guy to approach this, and I, I can tell horrible stories about Smithsonian. I really don't they have very good lawyers um, and I don't obviously this is personal experience and hearsay so I don't give a shit if you all believe me or not but let me just say this if you have a function that is done 
by government because it is a necessity, not because it is something that is profitable to do. Private industry, if it does it all well at all, it is only because there is some unintended consequence that makes it work well. Because if it cannot be reduced to the profit motive, private industry sucks at it. And things like equal access to information, equal access to justice, don't even get me started on the privatization of prisons. All right. If it requires that, private industry sucks at it because the last thing private industry, the last thing that ensures long-term profits is a level playing field. I'm sorry, but if it did, then private industry would be hiring lobbyists to ensure a level playing field, not the individual advantage of certain companies over others. If private industry encouraged fairness, then why doesn't private industry encourage fairness? Oh, because government's interfering. Well, government and private industry are both facts of life. I'm sorry. And if there is anything to be learned from this, I'm just going to cut this short right now before I start swearing. If there is anything to be feared from what is going to happen, it is that you go from the best system that is supported by the infrastructure and the people within an area to the best system that money can buy for the purchasers. So when you have the library being run by private industry, paid for by the county government, you are placing a step in between a remove. You, you are making the library itself, the source of information publicly available to everyone, one step further removed from the people it serves as far as accountability. And that will reduce efficiency, not promote it. That will reduce satisfaction in the long run, not promote it. That will encourage unintended consequences that will diminish the value of a, of a library and its reputation and its reliability, not enhance it. This is colored by my personal experiences. Sorry. That's true of all of us. Thank you for your time and attention. Please see the links below. And if you want to write somebody about it, you know, see what your county's doing. Check it out. Because this is not good.